everybody, we're here today. This is my friend Fuchsia. She is a florist here in town and this is her timber hoppa. hoppa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she came over this evening and we're pulling out, um, we have some forsythia, some southern smilax, lots of roses, some pretty hydrangea that's grown here locally up at Shady Grove Gardens by Susan and Brent. And um, then we also have, so these are called um, wedding spirit roses standard rose but has a garden rose kind of look to it have you seen these before yeah, they smell really good yeah they told me that they open really well um they just came in recently so they haven't had a chance to really do their full thing but this is what they look like at the moment have a nice um peachy pink undertone to them I have some Cafe Olay Dahlias. Um, these ones these ones needed to ship. Fuchsia has a big wedding this weekend, so the farm's saving all of the <laughs> all the dahlias for her wedding Sorry. this weekend. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got a few here. They, these just are um, these are a bit smaller than the ones um, that are grown here locally. What would you say? They're about this big. So these still have some opening to do since they ship. They cut them kind of closed and everything everything so they don't bruise whenever they travel um this ingredient is snowberry and it's called pink snowberry and fuchsia and i were talking about this it's um it's kind of unu an unusual color for pink snowberry usually it's more white and just has like a slightly pink tint to it but this almost is like a plum plum wine yeah kind plum of wine burgundy mm -hmm. it's really pretty yeah so we have that we also have some carnations to do some low base coverage and I always just fluff them out a little bit to get them as big as possible and use those as little canvas in the background a lot of times. And then quicksand roses and just some um, white Vivian spray roses. These are limelight hydrangeas. They turn a nice, um, I think that nice pink blush on them late in the season. And then these are the tart tartiva or quick fire they call them they put them in the con con conical conical category <laughs> <laughs> but i think these are such a fantastic this is one of my favorite um, ingredients to use late summer and into fall because you can pull these small pieces apart and you can do something very small like boutonniere mm -hmm. work or flower crowns and things like that and then you can cut you know these sections off here and you can use them low and center pieces and then you can also go really big and large scale with them as well on an arbor. So this is such a versatile ingredient late summer and into fall. I like I the like limelights. The, the back side uh -huh. is almost prettier sometimes yeah, than you the get front. that nice blush. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, and it just this changes throughout the season. So in another few weeks, this will the whole back side will almost be like a Dark, red wine yeah. burgundy kind of color. So Anyway, those are our ingredients today. I like to work one ingredient at a time. So we are going to start with forsythia and do, um, do our base work and then we'll layer a cloud of smilax on top of that and then we'll start adding some flowers in. But Fuchsia, why don't you tell us a little bit about the um, actual structure itself and how you um, commissioned the making of it yeah so i um was hired for a jewish wedding and it was my first time and so i asked my friend who is actually a home builder he is a timber frame home builder uh -huh. and i said can you help me because i don't know what i'm yeah. doing and yeah he we just kept it very simple and um so it's in all we have six seven eight there's eight, eight pieces logs. to it uh -huh. yeah yep. it's kiln dried poplar um that is local from the spruce pine area oh, okay uh -huh. um but it's it's a very bare slate yeah. that we're gonna just judge up yeah yeah for sure yeah it's um, fantastic it's pretty heavy um and it takes a little bit of like hoisting to yeah like we just had a workout <laughs> we just had quite the workout um, but, but really I mean yeah, the structure could be used um, for a Jewish wedding mm -hmm. but not necessarily it could be any kind of yeah. ceremony piece um, and traditionally they do um, have a prayer cloth that would yeah. hang above mm -hmm. um, but not necessarily it could be any 
any kind of focal point or it could be under a cake could mm -hmm. be here. Yeah, um, that's a it's great idea. pretty well rounded, you know, something to have in your inventory. Sure. And I was thinking too that another way that you could really simply change the look of this and, and give it another, like if you had another crossbar, like you'd really only need two more um, logs, but you could bring it in and you could close it in much more so that it was half the, you know, it yeah. wasn't like a deep box, oh, but you shorter. had not, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and then you have more of a traditional yep. like, arbor, arbor kind of piece. So that's one way my dad, whenever we put together, we put together this like custom structure and he's like, well, let's figure out how we could make, how we could like adjust it slightly and that you could use it in two different ways. And I was like, that's really mm. smart because Personal. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can have the flexibility to move it in or to push it out. And you have all these different like size configurations that you can do with it. Cause really it's just, you know, these pieces here are the bulk of it but just that small adjustment and you could have a completely different size which yeah, is fun absolutely um but yeah whenever you're trying to figure out like who in your area could help you create one of these things if you don't have a family member like a dad or you know a friend i think that what you had mentioned about somebody who builds houses or somebody yeah. who um even farmers i feel like are very like good at this type of thing uh, fabricator, fabricators, iron workers, welder. I welders. went to a welder and I said, I need a big circle to hang things from. Yes. And he yeah. made a big hoop for me uh -huh. and I hang lanterns and yeah. greenery and you just have to be creative. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. Also, um, like tent rigging companies oh. and those kinds of places are also helpful because they have to put together a lot of kind of custom pieces and custom structures. So even like a rental place might be a place, a resource that you could check if you needed to have something like this put together for your event. So we are gonna just start with forsythia. This late in the season, um, this was cut, this was cut on Thursday of last week and it's Monday. And it's been out of water over the weekend. Um, and you just, just keep it in a bag and keep it hydrated. But whenever I cut it, I let it like hydrate. And then uh, it does pretty well out of water this late in the season. Cause it's, it's you know, it has that like leathery yeah. feel. So it's pretty tough. Um, it's a bright green new growth in the spring. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use it in the spring, but late in the season now, after it's had a chance to harden off, it's, it's great and, and can hop up on an arbor pretty easily. So anyway, we're just gonna, we're gonna grab and use our zip ties and get it all put up there and we'll be right back. So I'm just, I'm making little bundles and attaching it directly to the piece. And Fuchsia's doing the same thing on her side. Just like whenever we make an arrangement and I talk about level one, how we establish the shape and size of where we're headed, that's what we're doing here. Again, even just on a larger scale. Fuchsia, what are some of your favorite things to use whenever you make arbors? Hmm. Well, I, I can get crazy with the greenery. Yeah. <laughs> and my one of my biggest things that I've learned for myself recently is knowing when to stop. Yeah. And yeah. when to say it's okay, you can stop now. <laughs> because otherwise we would be there till the bride and groom the, walks down the, the aisle. Yes, till the break of day. <laughs> um but I definitely I love things that are a little bit drippy. Uh-huh. And lush. Um Do you use lemon leaf? I like it. I feel like, like it's a workhorse. Yeah. You know, it's it's like the the workhorse that just keeps on giving. Yeah. And it's um, like so tough. It's and very affordable. Yep. Um, I like using that as a base layer. Like if we maybe didn't have for Scythia, like that would be a good call. It's definitely a different shape and it's pretty flat, but it's a lot of it's good coverage yes. for sure. Yeah. I'm making a little bundle to go at the top of your okay, your little thing over there. Okay, look. I think this is pretty too. Oh yeah, that is a little bit of oak. That was like a little surprise in there. 
Yeah, I like, um, what else do I put in arbors? I mean, I don't, I, I love, of course, flowers, of course, too. Yes. Um, it's so tough because it seems like at least at the venues that I work at, <laughs> like, like, um, like overlooks completely exposed, Crestwood's totally exposed. Yes. And you're there at the hottest part of the day after yes. the flowers have like traveled to the venue and been in and out of the car and all that kind of stuff. And then it's like, okay, now I'm going to put you up in this arbor in full sun and <laughs> it's all, I mean, I, Good I, luck, little flower. I think so much about the timing and the sun and how long it's going to take you and estimating the sun with the timing and how long it's going to take you mm -hmm. and, and when you need to be done. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like a math game too with that part. I know. I feel like it's, it's the last thing I do usually. Um, so it always feels kind of, <laughs> feels kind of frantic, but it's kind of fun because all of the flowers that I hadn't used in anything else end up going in, end up going in here, oh, yeah. you know? So that's a fun surprise for it to be maybe like a little bit fuller than I did have a good experience recently yeah, with uh, being creative for a rain backup. Oh and yeah, I had an what outside did you do? arbor at the Overlook Barn, uh -huh. and um, it was 90% chance of rain That's at awesome. ceremony time. <laughs> so we went inside uh, a small barn, and um, they have a garage door that opens uh -huh. and looks out. Uh -huh. And I attached all the greenery and the flowers to the garage door. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And I just was able to lift the garage door up and down and work on it and lift it up. Okay. It was kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you have to just I know. That's so tricky. It. When do you, is there a particular time that you like your clients to decide like, hey, you got to decide it's either in or it's out? <laughs> a lot of time it's the venue. Yeah. That makes that call. Uh-huh. That I have found. I try to be flexible though. Yeah. It's the wedding day. You want I it to know, be I know. I know. Wonderful for them. It is good. I always try to talk to people about it in advance like, okay, yep. scenario this happens like because it's hard to produce you know something if you don't have enough time to do it. And then sometimes it's better just to call rain and yep. you know, like make something fantastic inside. I did that um, in June. They made a call at 10 in the morning, and it was fantastic because I had kind of two hours to assess and to say, like, okay, well, now I'll bring these containers. And yep. we did a cool, like, inside little flower garden with her arbor stuff, and I really kind of liked it better than what the arbor was going to be. So if you can choose in advance, um, you can still come off with something that's, like, real fun. Yeah. We actually think that the garage door arbor was yeah. cooler than, than what we were going to do outside, just the way that it turned out. There was a beautiful chandelier. Yeah, and, there's something um, great about like last minute creativity. Yeah. Your brain's made to function that way in the moment, like to solve yeah. those. And I think for us in our, in our art, we definitely have to be able to think on the on fly. Our feet. Uh -huh. Yeah. And not panic. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and after you work really hard, you need to take a minute to sort of recover from it, you know? Yes. Oh, it's a lot of adrenaline running through. Oh, that's true. All right. I think we've got, I feel good about where we are with this. I'm going to leave this empty in the Yeah, room. I feel like, I feel like we can do that. Just take a quick look and now we can run in and grab Smilax to pop in over top, but maybe, maybe we just do like a little bit more on that side or we could take off a little bit on Yeah, I went side. all the way down because mm -hmm. we're running, we're just getting to short pieces. Mm -hmm. We could probably just take this one off and put it up there and then we'd be like even. Okay. I like this little bundle that you had together. It's a good one. Okay, there you go. Just do a little switch. Great. 
Yeah, because okay. this will be really like where most of our florals will live over here. I like to put them opposite the, the bride usually is standing this way and I like them to be up here. I think that a lot because of her dress. Yeah. A lot the of times the has symmetry like is. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. And she can look at them. All right. Fantastic. So I'm going to get rid of my wheelbarrow here. And we'll grab the Smilax. We're back with our Southern Smilax. This comes in what they call bales. bales. <laughs> You think hay, but yeah, no. Yeah, it's just like, a, you know, tons and tons of this stuff rolled up. It's a really, really tough vine. Um, so this is something that if you wanted to use it, you could really, you could really put it up the day before if you were in a situation where you needed to. And, and it, it, it is okay. It really is. It's fine. Yeah. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. Very hardy. Yep. I think that I want to take it apart a little bit. Also, I've uh, heard people call it Jackson vine. Mm -hmm. um, it grows here. I've seen it in oh, the woods. Have you? It's um, sometimes has thorns on it. This does not. This comes from East Texas Smilax. And it's great for anything large scale. Like if you have you know, you just need greenery for columns or you have maybe something that you want to hang foliages overhead on beams or wires on tops of tents. And I just did um, uh, wires across the barn, rows of them. Oh, cool. And then we suspended the Smilax across the wire. Like a little ceiling. Yep. Yeah. And then fun. hung really pretty candles also oh just, in them too yep wow. from the wire it was very fairy tale like yeah yeah it's it's large scale but it's also it still has a delicate feeling to it which is nice it's um a slightly so like the forsythia is a, a real dark green and then this is more of a more of a, a little bit of a yellow and it depends when in the season you're getting it when it's new growth it's even more more so than this yeah that's helpful i think that sometimes it can just almost be like too much you know and it can connect to each to itself <laughs> to itself <laughs> it's like well the one thing that i really like is that you don't hardly have to have any kind of mechanics right with it because it just you can weave it in yeah. and through, and it has all those little tendrils hook, you can wrap around. Yeah, you can hook <laughs> things, hook it to other things, mm -hmm. and... Yeah, we're going to put this in, um, like, light fixtures and that type of thing here later this month. So, right now, I'm... I'm wanting to add a little additional body and I'm also thinking about covering up the places where my zip ties are so that's what's going through my mind I'm also thinking about how when I put this in how it affects the overall shape of what we had you could have very easily like if you don't have this or I mean you could just go like I thought just the forsythia was pretty for a lower budget option absolutely it just gives a little bit but more this gives it a little bit more interest dense. yeah, yeah density. Mm -hmm. What did you call it? A cloud? Yeah. <laughs> the Smilax poof. I have also been thinking about what can we do with this part? Yeah. Because I think this is yeah. really cool too. Something, yeah. either a wreath. I've seen, um, um, is it Emily Thompson had an article in Flower Magazine where she used I don't remember it was Smilax, but it was some kind of vine that she had coiled up and used it as like chicken wire for the base of the arrangement, which I thought that oh. was clever. Mm -hmm. These are getting a little bit shorter. A little yucky. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this one's still pretty though. All right, so we're just going to add, well, I'll leave this ladder here. Um, after we get the Smilax in, we're going to put some oasis in and add some flower sprays to it 
So when I'm pricing an arbor, it's really the amount of flowers that are a big factor in determining how much it will cost because that's all product they need to purchase. So there's, there's kind of a base for like the, the structure and is it something you had to build or something in your inventory? And then there's the setting it up and that type of thing. And then the flowers are really, I think at least for me, that's where it's like, okay, well. And how long it's gonna take you. Mm -hmm. We can go crazy with flowers or we can keep it we can keep it light and that's that's where it comes in i'm going to work a little bit of this back on the back side as well i'm just thinking about those zip ties i think my phone's ringing <laughs> we usually shut them all shut them all down I'm adding some oasis and I'm just making a little cage with chicken wire wrapping it like a present and this will give us extra stability for the stems to latch onto and it'll keep our oasis from falling into little pieces. So I'm going to attach that and loop it up there with zip ties as well and this larger piece I'm going to hide in the, uh, the large section over here and then we'll do flowers here and then we'll do a little spray here as well. Fuchsia, hold me steady. Okay, I gotcha. You could just hang on to the Smilax and <laughs> Tarzan. Tarzan. So we're we're just covering, we're just really covering the oasis at this point. Yeah, this one's pretty. We'll put this down in here. I'm thinking about balance and like keeping for each little thing that I put in here, keeping the overall balance of the this distribution of this color, keeping it kind of even because our color palette's pretty soft. So there we have that. Now we're going to continue this swoop of color over here on the side. So yeah, a couple more of those. Perfect. They just have a, such great long stem, so they really can reach well. I like to use amaryllis sometimes. Oh. Yeah. It's hard not to think Christmas. <laughs> it is. You gotta get the amaryllis. You gotta get the right colors. <laughs> they're so pretty though. And I think they're pretty available right now, right? They're really available yeah. all the time now. You ready for I think I'm going to keep going for some more of these. Just okay. a few more. Like, maybe I'm pulling out this kind of colory one. Ooh, nice. Yeah, so like with these darker colors, if you want to create some depth in your arrangement, you can layer them towards the back and then it draws the eye in Do, 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 do. I want to put one like right up in here, but I cut that too short. Mm, just not this one. Here. It's got a little pretty bend. Oh, perfect. And it's nice and huge. Yeah. All right. Berries. <laughs> I always think it's amazing like what just a little bit of texture can do in a piece like this. Last weekend I used these in an arbor and they 
whoops, drape they hung down, uh -huh. like from inside. It was really pretty. Yeah. Dramatic. Yeah. And they're, it's a very strong. Yeah. Strong. Stem. Mm-hmm. With some tulips also draping down. Nice. You have a favorite tulip? Oh, I love those pretty little fringe ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those are fun, aren't they? And I love the green and white, but I always the have parrots. A, the, I'm not sure what the proper name is, but. They kind of are a little ruffly. It's all this, the yeah, the green and white parrot, but um, I always have a problem with them getting a little brown. Mm -hmm. Got any tips? Mm. When not oh, keeping tulips. them right. Well, I haven't had that. I haven't had that happen before, but it's not a color that I use very often. Yeah. So we might have to put a little note out there on community and see if anybody else uses them yeah. a lot. I think it's very damp here. That could be it. <sighs> nice. Oh, like those that. are really cool. Yeah, super fun. And roses are one of those things that most of these are in the oasis that I'm putting in there, but these are one of those things that will hold really well out of water as well. They're, they're bred to be tough. That's another workhorse, mm -hmm. I think. Yep, big, small, everywhere in between. I agree. It was so interesting, the last arbor that we did I had a bucket of extra flowers and I was like, let's just put these, let's just like tuck these in the, let's just tuck them in the Smilax, like the ceremony is happening in, you know, 20 minutes, <laughs> you know, let's just like tuck them in and see how they, they were do. probably the last ones still standing too, yeah. even out of water. Yeah, they were fantastic. The next morning we came to like break everything down and they, <laughs> they looked almost better in a way because they had had a chance to recover from all of that terrible heat, you know? And I'm wanting to distribute them evenly. Like I'm still thinking about this base layer of color and structure, but I'm moving into the next, thinking about, you know, next adding some of those quicksand roses and getting some movement and line happening in the arrangement. And these are just going to step, you know, step above the rest of the flowers. And we'll layer in the roses and then we'll finish off with the more of the garden style rose and the dahlias. So like this, for example, is not going in water. You could put a water pick in it if you wanted to it was going to be up or you were going to do it the night before maybe you're doing an inside wedding that would be a good time to use one arbors are a little tricky to get the the movement and that type of thing down and because it's so close to your face and so big when you're arranging it's tough to imagine the line but definitely have to step back and look yes sometimes i'll have somebody just tell me up, down, right, left. <laughs> kind of guide through. It's fun to have a friend help with that. I find too, whenever you're so, whenever I'm like so close to the flowers, it's, it's easy to forget about back here. And this, and you end up with something that looks kind of flat. So you really have to move the flowers the whole way through, like front to back and even down in this area here to get your color carried through. That's a good thing to think too. It's, I know um, you have your buddy that helps you pretty often, Fuchsia, like whenever you're working together, um, do you have like a preference of like, like one person arranging the same thing or when you're working together as a team, do you do that little like check of like making sure that it looks the same when different people are arranging or how do you 
I how definitely do you know? have. Everybody has their own like patterns, you know, that they yeah work in. I definitely have a person that's like my hard goods queen. Oh yeah, does <laughs> all those candles. Gets all and... the candles ready for me, and um, and I honestly have only been working with a with help within the last two years yeah so it's definitely it's something new mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. for sure to not have to do everything myself yeah or let go of that control yeah so how was that like the, very hard the... <laughs> because I'll say go get this and then I'll go get it with them yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And they're like, just tell me yeah it's well, hard to let go a little bit but it has it been is. amazing yeah to have help yes and and just taking that step to be okay with hiring well helpers. and it's like you're so used to the at least i was so used to the just like rush 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 you know because right. you're you're just trying to get it done and so it's almost natural to just be like go get this and then you're like fi you find yourself there right too, i'm doing you know? what i just asked them to do <laughs> yeah but oh. once i have kind of let go of that it's been wonderful it's felt good oh yes yeah so do I have a specific person that can do a certain task I'm not quite there yet yeah yeah I have my hard goods queen yeah <laughs> yeah and that's super duper helpful that's oh, a really yeah. good way to that's a really good way to approach it you know if there's there's different needs and if you feel like you know, you like to do all the flowers, then do all the flowers and have other people come in and support you because you're really good at flowers. You know, sometimes too, like yep. maybe you need somebody to run logistics and just to handle like making sure Absolutely. lunch comes and things like that that don't require designing. So you can be more available to do the thing that you are the best at. So the last, the last flower I'm going to add are the dahlias. And I've been saving a little spot here for them to hang out. And generally many. they'd be just a little bit bigger, but and they would be like really that like star of the show, but they're kind of a similar size to the rose. So you can see how they compete with each other just a little bit, but it's not life or death. We're we're making an arbor. It's pretty. I like how the cafes have that little bit of purple in them. That hmm. that's the whole thing about that flower. Yeah, can be the color variation. And khaki and pink. And everything I think it's in between. Super cool. Yeah. Someone told me they didn't like dahlias. <laughs> I was like, I showed this beautiful cafe au lait. He's like, don't like it. I was like, no. Wow. That like, doesn't no, happen very often. That doesn't, no, it happens like <laughs> never. Okay, so now that I have everything in, I'm just looking for naked stems. This is something that my eye is so drawn to lines. So whenever I look at this, I'm like, oh, naked stems. So I'm gonna take some of this soft hydrangea and just weave it in to cover up some of my my naked stems and soften that up a bit. And then we'll be all done. How you doing over there? I'm getting along. Pretty good? Yeah. Looking for naked stems now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. I don't like that at all. Everybody has their like thing that they're I've never you thought know, about it once. Kind of sensitive <laughs> about and that's mine. That's so funny. It's a good opportunity to weave some vines in or something like that. All right. Well, thanks for popping in today and watching us do our our hope. I hope that it helps you with the next project that you have and Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs>